Hey guys, Kyle with Max Conversion here with you today to walk you through what you should expect whenever you have a Google Ads manager set up your account or manage your account. I want to walk you guys through the first, first overview of your account once it has been set up to confirm that everything has been set up properly. Um, going over best practices and tips to make sure that you guys aren't wasting money when your Google Ads account was set up. And this is coming from a Google Ads manager. We set up accounts all the time. If we had another Google Ads company set up our Google Ads, these are the kind of things that we would look for in the account to make sure that it's just following best practices. Now, if something comes up that is not covered in this video, make sure that if you guys do have an agency that you're working with or a freelancer or the person who set up your account, that you ask them those questions say hey why is this in the account or why is this in the account why are we doing this so this is a broad overview of what you should look for for best practices so that you're not wasting money in your first month of google ads let's get into it all right guys so this is a live campaign that we actually just set up this week at max conversion for a moving company i want to walk you guys through what we do how we do it how we set it up um, so that you know if you got an account set up or a campaign set up for your, for your agency, for your company, uh, whatever it may be, what you should expect and what you should look for um, that are green signs and ones that are red signs. And let's jump into it right now. So the campaign that we set up is this one here. So we set up this campaign uh, and the first thing that we wanna look at is the campaign structure and what kind of targeting is happening in the campaign on the campaign level. So the thing that we're gonna look at was we're gonna look at bid strategy, going to look at campaign URL, we're going to look at ad schedule, and we're going to look at the location. Uh, we're also going to look at, additionally, the assets, make sure that all assets are in place. So if we go to the campaign, the first thing we're going to want to look at is campaign settings. Campaign goals, uh, make sure that they're uh, set to phone calls and lead forms. Uh, sometimes you'll have these contacts here, but a lot of times there's no goals uh, within that context section. Um, customer acquisition, that's something you can look over network if you guys are running a lead campaign i would highly highly recommend turning off search partners turn that off and turn off display network uh in terms of location uh what you're going to want to look for uh actually we'll jump into this in just a sec on the locations tab for a better overview uh languages um do one language per campaign so if you speak spanish duplicate that campaign and set up a spanish budget uh that that's up to you guys uh bidding uh typically what we recommend for beginner campaigns is running a max clicks or manual CPC bidding strategy, even in September of 2024. However, if you guys are, uh, you know, running a target impression share or a brand campaign, then you may want to look at target impression share or a different bidding strategy. However, I would say for the most part, what we notice is that max clicks or manual CPC is by far the best bidding strategy to start with. I would recommend create, uh, turning off automatically created assets. Uh, we want to manage the campaign. We don't want Google managing our campaign. Uh, make sure that you have a dynamic search ads uh, URL here, just in case you guys want DSA. Um, ad rotation, this is a preference at the beginning. You can either perform best performing ads or do rotate ads indefinitely. Um, some people do recommend rotating ads indefinitely at the beginning of the campaign just to get even testing throughout all the ads because Google doesn't know what ads perform the best until the run um, run for a while they get clicks and and uh, really we recommend about over 20 clicks for an ad to really see how it's performing um, campaign URL options that's okay IP exclusions that's okay as well as well as brands so we look at the campaign settings and the bid strategy the next thing that we're gonna want to look at is the location um, so we look go to locations we select our campaign and we then look into the campaign so here we are targeting the LA area uh, the, what we like to do here is exclude the areas around it. Occasionally, we run into issues where uh, clicks are, are coming from outside of the designated area, and that is not what we want to do. And there is a way to change that because you've got people who are in the location or people who are in and interested. Uh, so we want to make sure that setting is turned to people in the area. But even with that setting, sometimes they do come from out. So what we do recommend is excluding the areas. This is not really a big issue. If you have your account set up and they didn't exclude the areas, that's no problem at all. Um, 
You can also set it up with just the radius. That's no problem at all. But what we like to do at Max Conversion is set it up with all the different cities. That way we're able to see what cities are performing the best uh, in the long run. This is all about collecting data and making data-driven decisions. Um, we've got uh, the, the different cities. We've got congest... I'm sorry, guys. Congressional districts uh, as a way to target as well as uh, a zip code here. The way you're going to want to do this is if you guys are modifying the location and you have a current radius, what you can do is you can go to show all areas, uh, scroll over to your area, um, and once you scroll into your area, you guys can go by postal code, you guys can go by city, and what you want to do is you want to just, you want to zoom in, you want to click on it, and click include here, and you can include all the different cities that are in that area. Uh, select save once it's complete. So I would recommend having all the cities, but it is not dire if uh, if it's just a radius. Add schedule. Add schedule uh, is uh, up to you guys. What I would recommend, depending on your guys' budget, is lower budgets. I would recommend only, only, only running during business hours that you know you can answer the phone. If you can't answer the phone, then I would recommend running it just during times you can answer the phone. For larger budgets, and this is all... Uh, preference and depends on your industry, but for larger budgets, you guys can get away with running it after hours or before hours. Um, we've just seen that the faster you answer the phone, uh, the faster you can get to a customer, the more likely you are to close and get a higher ROI on the campaign. So look at your ad schedule, review it, and make sure that you can answer the phone during the hours you're running the ad. Um, the example I always like to give is if you go to a restaurant and they have a 20 minute wait. A lot of times, or an hour wait, a lot of times, if it's not, you know, if you don't know the restaurant and you're trying something out, you're going to go and look for a different restaurant if there's a lot close by, which in most industries and services, there's plenty of other services. So why would a customer wait a day or two days for you to get back to them if you can't answer the phone right away? That's what we always say. Um, answer the phone, run the ad schedule around you answering the phone. Assets are very, very important. Um, the way we like to do it is add image assets, add business name assets, add business logo. This is you guys need to verify the ads account uh, and add those. We add site links. Uh, we add call out extensions. We add structured snippet. We add a call extension, location extension, and if it applies to you, a price or promotion extension. The more assets, the better. But review the campaign, which was set up to make sure that all these assets that can be used are being used. Headline description. Not really required. It's it's still a newer asset in September 2024. Uh, make sure lead. Make sure that your location is set up. Um, if the company who set up your ads did not does not have access to your Google Business Profile, uh, make sure that you share that with them so that they can set it up. Lead forms are not really required. Uh, they don't show very frequently. Um, price, app, and promotion is only if you guys do have a promotion or a price that you can share. Make sure that all these assets that we went over and that apply to you are set up and that the, can the company who set up your ads have, have all those set up for you. Um, over to um, the ad groups. So ad groups should be themed. Um, and this is always changing a little bit. It used to be single keyword ad groups. Now it's single themed ad groups. Um, stags, stags versus uh, skags. Um, and so with this, we would recommend having it themed. Um, moving company, apartment movers, business movers, local movers, office movers, and honestly, local movers and moving company could be in the same as well as movers. However, we've just got them. We've just got them spread out differently so that we can uh, better organize the campaign. But out of state, senior moving, all these are different types of themes. And the reason why we do this is because if you guys have different themes. You can run your ads to different landing pages, right? So business and commercial movers can be run to a business and commercial landing page. However, if you have it in the same ad group, you can only have one ad group, or I'm sorry, one landing page per ad group. And so business movers and uh, just moving company, they're two separate because it's residential and commercial. So we would recommend uh, separating those. And that goes with most industries. So if like for plumbers, toilet repair and faucet repair, those are two different services. There should be two different landing pages separate those out uh, into different themes. If the company that set up your ads has everything jumbled into one, um, one ad group or two ad groups, I would recommend reaching out or looking into it to see what kind of additional themes you can separate your ads into. 
Uh, it's very important to separate the themes. Additionally, we have location ad groups. Uh, location ad groups have been really, really performing well. Um, so basically your main keyword, in this case, moving company. And then we have the, so it's like moving company out Anaheim, Pasadena, Beverly Hills, um, you know, long distance mover, Beverly Hills. You don't need to separate the themes into, you don't need long distance Beverly Hills as well as residential movers Beverly Hills. You can put everything into one if you'd like to, uh, and we typically do just create location ad groups. Um, we like to put our main location in the main ad group. So Los Angeles in this case, putting it in the ad group of moving company here. If you guys are a different service, um, let's say you guys, you guys are a plumber. Um, so plumbing company and your say your main location is Phoenix. It would be plumbing company Phoenix, a plumbing contractor Phoenix, plumbing service Phoenix, and then you would have those keywords into different ad groups around the location that you're in. Um, so whatever big, whatever additional cities that you feel are relevant that get enough volume that people are looking for around the Phoenix area or whatever area that you're located in, creating additional ad groups there. So that's very, very important. Um, the next thing is going to be the match types. So this is a very big one. If the company that set up your ads are running broad match, you may want to look into it further. Um, and you can run broad match in 2024 with a very, very strict strategy. And I would recommend a script on top of that so that it aggressively adds negative keywords that are poor performing. Um, but for most cases, 90% of cases and 99% of accounts that we run, we start um, start them all on phrase match and exact match. The reason we start on phrase and exact is because you have more control over the ads. Um, you have more control over what's being found. For example, the three the the three moving the three match types are broad, phrase, and exact. Broad is basically if we just set up moving companies, you would show up for everything under the sun, right? So you'd show up for U-Haul rentals, you'd show up for storage space, you show up for uh, all the different moving companies that there are in that location, and so it's very broad. Closely think of broad as closely related to what the keyword is, um, and you never know what's going to show up with broad. So that's why we recommend phrase and exact. Phrase is basically moving companies, any any phrase that includes moving companies in it in any variety of order uh, will show up, right? So um, looking for moving uh, moving services, uh, moving companies in Phoenix, looking, you know, uh, find best moving companies in Phoenix. Uh, it can also be separated. So uh, moving services and companies in Phoenix. So it's got moving companies in the same phrase. So that's how phrase match works. Exact match is... Uh, it used to be very exact, right? Moving help. Now it's a little bit looser. Um, so moving near me will show up for a variety of keywords. Um, moving, it can show up. It's moving near me, moving services near me. It's very, it's exact, but it's also a little bit looser as well. So um, that's that's the three different match types, but make sure that you guys are running phrase and exact match. If for some reason there's broad match, what I would recommend is reaching out to the company or the next step is reviewing the negative keyword list. So our negative keyword list, we've got 110 already in the campaign. We've been running a moving campaign for a while. I would recommend uh, immediately negative keywording all the, the uh, question words, the job words. So who, what, where, when, why, um, even who is just not like, who, who does this? It can be good, but a lot of times it's very research. So we go ahead and remove it. Um, you also want to remove uh, job keywords. So, you know, job, CV, resume. You want to also remove uh, just different types of words related to other companies. Uh, you know, reviews and pictures and tips and jobs and, you know, people researching how to start a specific company, you know, how to start a moving company. Um, removing keywords that are relevant to people, you know, any sort of research regarding um, what, you know, any sort of research, uh, like in the painting industry, uh, you know, black, uh, black color painters are, you know, they're looking up different color paint. Um, you want to remove all those sort of paint. And so remove those immediately. Uh, in some industries, a company will have a large negative keyword list. At Max Conversion, we do have a large negative keyword list for a lot of the industries we work with. So immediately we start this company off with 3,000 negative keywords for uh, movers as well as on all accounts we block names. So 
names go over just just first names, company names, uh, removing anything that could show up for a competitor because uh, we don't like competitor ads. So like Armstrong Moving Company, we don't want to show up, so we remove Armstrong. And we've got 1,800 names in this, and it helps. Um, this isn't really required for your moving company, spe- or sorry, your company specifically. If you did have somebody just set up the ads for you, most likely they're not going to have negative keywords. But what I would recommend is going in and adding negative keywords using ChatGPT, using online searches just to find what negative keywords you don't want to show up for, and then keeping a very, very close eye on the uh, search term report to make sure that it is good. Even with the negative keywords, you can see here, this is this campaign's been running for uh, two days. Even with these, we're getting searches for Chinese letters, uh, and these get removed very, very quickly. Uh, you know, bar movers, and just keywords that aren't that good. Uh, and that does happen at the very beginning of a campaign. So what you wanna do is go into the search term report and immediately remove these keywords, add them to the negative keyword list so that you're not wasting money on those keywords. Overall, that's kind of what you want to look for in a campaign. Uh, additionally, you can you can ask about you know targeting, but overall, you want to look at the location, make sure the location's targeting right, make sure that the ad schedule is correct, make sure that the keywords aren't phrased in exact match. Um, if they did set up a landing page, making sure that it's relevant to your brand, that it has call to action. Um, we've got another video on that. We'll put it up in the corner here on landing pages, uh, building out landing pages, analyzing landing pages. Um, making sure that you have the correct assets. Uh, bidding strategy is very important. Um, one additional thing I would like to mention is locations, going back to that, is a section you wanna have here is, this will automatically be on by Google, but what you wanna do is make sure that as people in or regularly in your included area, having that is going to benefit you tremendously because people from other countries and other areas that are not in your service area are it'll prevent them from showing your ad in those areas. So it'll prevent wasted spin and poor leads. Um, but this is mainly what you guys want to look for. Uh, if somebody did set up your campaign and you're analyzing it and you don't know what to analyze, this is exactly what you want to look for. Um, if you guys do have questions about a campaign that's been set up for you, please leave a comment down below. We respond to all questions. Um, it can be as detailed or as short as you like. As always, if you guys did find this video helpful, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button for more helpful Google Ads content.